What's up tech fans, Kevin here on Tech Tomorrow bringing you guys another benchmark test. This time it's the much anticipated Witcher 3, which a lot of people are curious about because of those daunting spec requirements. Now just taking a quick look at the options menu, you can see that the game does have its graphic settings divided into two separate sections, graphics and post-processing. Graphic presets come in low, medium, high, and ultra, while post-processing is just low, medium, and high. So we ran four separate tests running both on low, both on medium, both on high, and ultra with high. Now as far as far as what gameplay segment we chose to run these tests through, we picked one of the game's open world side quests, which is where you will spend a lot of time in the game. It's during a clear, sunny day while fighting enemies and traversing a lot of terrain. Your mileage may vary a little bit based on what the current weather conditions are, what kind of enemies you're fighting, how often you're using spells, or if there's fires in the background, but as far as just the average game time goes, this is what a lot of it's going to look like. Now, if you're not familiar with our test system that we've used in previous tests, it does include a GTX 780 as well as an i7 4770K processor that is overclocked. If you guys want more in-depth specifics, we do have that linked down below. As for how all of this ended, well, let's take a look. So as you can see, the game can definitely be daunting at higher settings, just barely missing 30 frames per second at max, and it will go lower during more hectic scenes. But it's also a bit more forgiving on lower settings, seeing it jump up nearly 50 frames per second at its lowest. So while it will take a good bit of power to get the game running smoothly on high settings, you can still get a pretty good frame rate as long as you don't mind sacrificing a bit of the graphics quality. World Detail definitely takes the biggest hit on lower settings, but interior places and character animations still look great across all settings. As for how the game is thus far, I'm absolutely loving it. While this one does deviate a decent bit gameplay-wise by opening the world up and focuses on items being more readily replenishable and with shorter durations, the whole thing feels like just the right mix of keeping the complexity and difficulty of older Witcher games, but making it all a lot more accessible and easier to jump into. Combat is fast-paced and a hell of a lot smoother than either of its predecessors, and the move to open world has made monster hunting a much larger and more interesting part of the game, focusing on you tracking beasts down, figuring out what exactly it is you're up against, and getting hints as to what kind of weapons, spells, and potions will help you out the most against them. I'm only a few hours in and the game feels absolutely massive, and there's a lot more ground to cover before I can give a proper full opinion, but if the early game's pace keeps up, Witcher 3 looks to already be a huge contender for game of the year. If you're interested in grabbing the game, we do have it linked down below. As always, if you guys enjoyed the vid, wreck that like button to let us know, and subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss out on any future vids. Till next time, guys, I'm Kevin Kenson. You've been watching Tech Tomorrow. See you later.